Attention, please. And now, it's Cutter's Rock Cat. How you doing? Holy shit, it's Winston McCall. <laughs> How are you? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Like, finally decompressed from tour, which is nice. So, yeah, feeling good. I bet. Was uh, You guys obviously just got back from a, a giant European tour, by the way, it looked. Yeah. Not that you yeah. guys aren't literally the biggest band in the world every time you tour in Europe, <laughs> it looks like. <laughs> thanks it was very it was really good like it was just good to be back like first tour back from covid but yeah it was a it was a wild one it was a wild one <laughs> it looked like it it looked like it well man hey you know it's it's good to see you it has been um way too long uh yeah. since uh, yeah. we've sat down and had a conversation and a lot has happened over the course of the last three or four years yeah you could say that yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could say that's a massive understatement, but yeah, yeah, a lot's a lot's happened, man. Like it's um, it's nuts that it's like that we're still in this weird time warp where like three years kind of flashes by, but all of that, all of that time, yeah, it's uh, in in terms of a band's career and life, that's a huge chunk of time. So for us, yeah, a lots a lots happened. It's been a been a I don't even know how, like, you can't really sum, sum up what's happened to this band in that time, but we made an album and now we're back. So big that's a, 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 that's a shortcut to like the, the big things that's happened for us. <laughs> you got to look at the positives. You got, yeah, yeah, that's it. That's um, it. Yeah. I, I guess first and foremost, Winston, obviously it's been pretty public what you guys went through. Um, mm. Congratulations on still being a band and oh, thank you. Be, yeah. being in touch with yourselves enough obviously playing in many bands myself none of them ever lasted longer than a couple of years but like to be able to be in touch with yourselves to know um that you have to do something uh you should be proud of yourselves i think you should yeah it is no i i I, we definitely are and i'm 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 proud of the band i'm proud of my friends as well um just on a a base friendship level of us um of us re- like taking the time to realize and not throw it away because we're like, we really did get to a point where like our communication and the, the amount of history of bad communication behind the band um, and in this, in the entire band's career, it, it's a, there's a lot of weight in that. Like it, it builds, it builds like these neural pa- neural pathways that can like, when you're dealing with resentment and stuff like that, it can, you can really trap you and, mm-hmm it's a very hard thing to kind of to find your way out of unless you have, I guess a, the group will and the group love to want to keep doing it. And luckily everyone in the band had that came from that place of like, I still care about you guys as friends and I want to work this out and I still want to do this collective thing that we're doing. And for everyone to step into that and and do the work and commit to that work is a, is a huge thing. Like it's a, it's a, it's a really big thing. And I, I, I being vulnerable as a person full stop is a and as a man especially is a is a it's a really challenging thing when you've had like these walls of stoicism up for so long Mm -hmm. to drop them down and let let everyone in on what your life experience has been like for for 17 18 almost 20 years now um is a huge like that's a huge thing it takes a lot of trust it takes a lot of trust yeah well listen i mean just i will set this up for a second right parkway drives at a huge giant level in your mm. careers now knowing you guys as long as i've known you i've seen how you guys act with each other backstage on yeah. stage uh you know on a level that you know some fans don't get to see and they always seem like love and admiration for everyone yeah. but um it's hard to put yourself in that vulnerable state i went through therapy uh just right before the pandemic hit actually yeah um do you know due to some dark stuff and it, it was hard man it was the hardest thing i ever yeah. did now compound that with the fact that you're this public figure yeah you're millions of fans worldwide expecting you guys to continue to do stuff expecting you guys to be a certain way and to act a certain way i can't mm-hmm. even i can't even imagine i can't yeah it's a it's an interesting one because like I mean, to be honest, the thing that that has has always driven this band is is we just we do what we do because we we love it and we love hanging out with each other and we we care about the 
the art that we create and that's kind of it and everything else in terms of the success of this band and the connection that we have with our fans has grown from that really organic point. So when it came to fixing or working on this, this issue that we we've had, it, it, it came from the same point of, of us like disregarding anything else, disregarding where we had to just go like, yeah, we're, we're a huge band. We're successful. People expect this, like expect that. But at the core of it, we're just like, we're the only ones that know we're like we're the five guys Mm -hmm. that in this thing that has taken us so much further than our imagination could ever have have conceived and we're the only ones who actually know that experience and we're and we still do value that experience it's never been what we've been going through has not been something that's been built up from us actually growing to dislike each other or having animosity towards each other it's been out of a drive and a commitment to just push this this project forward through a through a an aspect of survival to a degree like when you come from nothing you are very aware that it could all just disappear so instead of dealing with things as you go along you just kind of take on the load and you say we'll deal with it later we'll deal with it later let's just do the next tour we'll we'll talk about it later we'll just do this next record and then after 17 years like the cracks become so wide that you can't throw a bandaid on it. The bandaid just falls down into the abyss and you have to confront like all of those times you are like, we'll deal with it later. It's like, okay, now you've got 20. We'll deal with it later, which were small things, which have become this huge thing, which you could like, is just jamming the wheels up of, of life for us. So yeah, that's, that's basically where it, where it got to it got the point that it got to for us. Um, but it's been really like, it's honestly been really nice. It's been a really nice connect like it's been traumatic but like the connection that we've been able to gain coming out of it is one of mutual respect and understanding because honestly we never knew we never took the time to ask each other how is this affecting you personally when you're in it together you're like we're in it together but that is like that invalidates the personal differences that we have in our own lives and this band has affected people in very different ways and we never really took the time to understand each other properly and when when we actually do we like holy shit man this means different things to different people and what it's cost them and what they've given is completely different in every scenario and like I, i've gained a much deeper level of friendship and respect for the guys that i've like been friends with since i was in grade seven that's so, amazing. yeah it's amazing yeah so i was thinking about this as a you know trying to kind of just make some mental notes of what we were going to talk about today um <laughs> the whole record to talk about and yeah the festival next year and some other yeah. stuff but um it, it was interesting because i was having this conversation earlier with a with a friend of mine about w- how the world is now compared to how it was maybe 30 years ago and mm. it was just it, societal conversation it's all you know it's all yeah. and thinking about what you guys have just gone through, but still releasing a new record, still getting back onto the road and keeping it together and keeping it going and becoming closer. You can't help but think of Metallica as some kind of monster. Yeah, of and, course. <laughs> in the fact, and I'm sure other people have brought that up to you. But oh man, we brought it up as soon as it started happening. We were like, <laughs> we can't come on to this. Like, it's the first reference point you go to. Yeah, at yeah. least Elon, you didn't call that guy. You're fine. No. Uh, yeah, but uh, you know, back then when that had come out, when that documentary had come out. Um, it uh, you know, Metallica was shit on so hard yep. by so many people. Um, and to flash forward now, tw- almost twenty years, or really twenty years since the recording of that, uh, it's such a different mindset. People are in it such is. a different place in the world that it, instead of it being like, oh, a big metal guy is going to therapy, you're gods. What are you yep. talking about? Da, da, da. Now it's like, good, awesome, yes, do it. Do you need to talk? Yeah. Need to hug? And it's yeah. just, it's great. It's a great thing. Oh, it's an amazing thing. And like, it, it is really crazy too. I mean, it just shows that Metallica have been ahead of the curve with so many things in general. Truth. Like, full stop. Full stop. Like when they do something at this point in time, you can just assume that they they know they know the right, the right path basically, uh, but yeah, like it 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 is, and and that's also everything you said is true, and that's also why we wanted to be quite forthcoming with with what we were going through. It was there was no smoke and mirrors of like 
let's give a different excuse so we can like i don't know uh, it's easy to like feel the, the the weight of stigmatizing something um but but we felt like it's the same thing we do with everything in this band like the if you, if you're hopefully if you're forthcoming about the reality of the situation that not only will people be more understanding but you can provide like in the same way that we were like well metallica did it and they're still going we can be a band that or just people that that can set an example because it's it, if we are at this stage in society which i think we it's very different time when people are encouraged to seek help and and validate the fact that the, the world is hard and just going just fucking deal with it isn't enough um that someone in our position should be like if they're going through something should be leading by example and be able to yeah be a role model in that way so we figured if there was something positive to be able to be gained from this situation in terms of giving back that we should do it so that's kind of the way we've approached it and we've like i've been talking very very openly about every single aspect of this in every interview that we've done there's nothing that i that i'm not willing to talk about with it because i think it's valid like it's it's a very big societal change and it's i think it's a really good one i think it's a, it's a the conversations that need to be had and their conversations that need to be encouraged it you guys are a live band i mean that's what you do you, yeah. you guys play live <laughs> you play amazing live shows so right. to cancel a whole tour um to do that i know that had to be a very difficult decision to make the thing that the thing that blew me away though and knowing one of the agents in the united states that was part of that um but knowing just how supportive everybody was and nobody yeah. there wasn't a lot of hate you know um yeah. oh fuck those guys they canceled my tour oh, i had tickets for that or i was looking forward to seeing them and kill switch or whatever it may be um yeah but what was the without going into too many personal details, because I want you to do that, but um, I know you're wearing your heart on your sleeve. I get it. But uh, what was the sort of factor of there is no, like what was the straw that broke the back, so to speak, of there's no way we can go to a country that's literally a different day in the time yeah. zone department um, yeah. because we, we're, we're going to, we're going to, kill each other yeah so, you know, so whatever this, the thought process was no the, I'll, I'll tell you the exact thought process of it it just it happened like this it would have been whatever tour there was at that point in time booked anywhere in the world that it was not just like it could have been an australian tour it would have been the exact same result we could have been playing a show in our hometown the result would have been the same we would have cancelled it what it was was um essentially like we had five years ago like come to a point where the band really started exploding and the the responsibilities that we took on as as band members because we are so hands-on with this mm -hmm. just grew and grew and grew um but we did the thing that we always did which was just like take the weight on individually and push forwards and don't really talk about any of it and when we started we actually had some band meetings about yo this is all like very different from when we started we need to kind of talk about this but the walls were already up and we had a tour coming up in a month's time. And we we're like, all right, let's, let's like, let's have a couple of meetings and we'll just talk about it a little bit. And then we'll go, all right, that's, that's good. That's good enough. And we'll just go back to doing what we're doing because you're in the tour record tour record grind. And you don't want to risk like the, the survival mentality of being in a band is if you take yourself out of a tour or you take yourself out of that cycle or you miss a, re a recording or something, you get replaced. Like then another band slides into that spot and the audience is going to forget about you. Like it, it's, it's such a, like, it might not be the reality of it, but that's the perception when you're in it. And no, I think five, that it is the reality of it though. In a lot of situations. Yeah, like it's, 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 it's hard. So like for us, we tried to deal with it at that point in time and we did it and said the priority was going back on tour. The priority wasn't on us. The priority was just doing what we had to do to get back on tour. And essentially what we found was when it came around after COVID and all of the pressures of that and recording this album and the everything coming to a head that we were left in the exact same position that we were five years previously, but the same cracks were there 
but they were even wider. And then you have five years more of like the same cycle that had led us like with communication and everything had like, it had really like calcified like the resentments and the roadblocks in the way we were communicating and everything that we sat down and we were, we were like, we got to have a talk. And then when we started talking, we we're like, this is going nowhere. Like, this is bad. Um, like, what do we do? And we were literally like, who wants to actually like go on tour right now? And no one wanted to go on tour. Like, we just, we just didn't want to do it. We didn't want to be in that state. Like sitting in the room together was just, it was just tense. It was mm -hmm. tense and it was like electric and gnarly and a lot of like, we just didn't even, we didn't know how to connect whatsoever. And we had to have a really rational thought of what is going to happen? Like, what's the worst scenario of both of these things? Right now you can go on tour, you can not go on tour. One, you go on tour, there's a very good chance that this will only escalate and the entire band will break up and you'll have a bad experience on the road and it's your first time coming back after COVID. You haven't toured in three years and you're like, well, this isn't what I want to do with my life. Fuck this, I'm out. The band is done. In that state, no one gets anything from Parkway ever again. Or you look at it and you go, well... Well, well hold on. And I'm just, I'm just going to yeah. make this point to that because not only that, but the way tour and it's opened up now, but touring at that time was so the bubble. Like yeah. you yeah. guys would not have yeah. had any reprieve from each other at oh, all. Oh, that was it. Yeah. Like it was like, we, we were going to the pub bar. across the street. No, you know? it was like, you'll be sitting in your tour bus in this tense environment that you're currently feeling in this room, but you are going to be on the other side of the country and you can't get off that tour bus and you're looking at these same faces that you can't connect with properly right now. And it's inescapable. And you don't get to like walk out of that room and go home and like decompress a little bit. You're just going to be there and you haven't dealt with anything. And we're like, the problem is still going to be there. Like the live wire is still just sparking around in that room going ding, 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 ding. No one turned the power switch off, but you just have the pressure of like going on stage again and mm -hmm. if what we love is being on stage then this is the surefire way of killing it is like dragging that live wire and making it connect straight to like the dynamic on stage and just going nah this this ain't it so it was that or try and fix it like it was like take the time don't commit to a to a tour just go this might take this might take two weeks this might take two years this might take the rest of our lives but if we take away that that um, impending, like in a month's time, you have to go and be in this room with people um, away, then you're left with a much, like essentially it's the prioritize. It was us choosing to prioritize ourselves over the band for the first time, because it was always the band, like do everything for the band, do everything for to keep the wheels on the band rather than make sure the people that make up the band are actually happy. Yeah. Um, and that's, and that's what it came down to. And at the end of it, it was like on the basis, literally at the base level of like, what does this mean for Parkway? You're like, well, you can let down uh, a group of fans who haven't seen you in three years, who have every right to feel let down by us canceling a tour, which sucks. But if we break up, every fan is done. Like the, every fan is going to feel that. So it was, it's not like an easy thing to do, but at the, at the same time, at least, you know, that when you come back as a band and you come back stronger and you, you're more connected that what you're going to be giving is better than what you were giving originally. So yeah, that was kind of the, that was the, the equation of humanity that went on at that point in time. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So when was it? So darker still is obviously the latest Parkway drive album. Yeah. Um, yeah. Fantastic. By the way. Um, Thank you. You're welcome. I'm a little bit of a fan, but you already know that. So I was, yeah. <laughs> but, um, so when was this, when was this written recorded? Like in the process of all of this, you guys managed to put out a record. Yeah. Right. So like, um, we, we started writing, like it would have been like six months into COVID when it first started. Um, and a, a lot of this, like it brought like the process that we went through brought a lot of this to, to the surface because um we we essentially started writing at a time when like you we just 
rescheduled two tours kind of thing. And then all of a sudden you're realizing the next rescheduling is not going to go ahead. And you're like, oh, this is going to be around for years. This is not something which is disappearing in like six weeks and you're back on tour. This is the long haul. Like so you all fought at first. Yeah, yeah, that's it. So we started writing and um, we basically just started writing with an open-ended time frame, which is a really unique thing. Like generally you are writing within the confines of like you have X amount of weeks or months to write an album and then you've got to be on tour again. And it all falls into a very regimented schedule. Well, listen, so, every every band that I have interviewed over the course of the last year has said the exact mm-hmm. from from Joe Satriani earlier this week yeah. to nothing more to Boston Manor. It doesn't matter the band or who yeah. they were. Everybody has had that sort of same experience as far as the pandemic yeah. goes. Of oh, man, it used to be we had six weeks and everything had to get done. We had like yep. years. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. And the, the, the thing is, that's a that's a that's a blessing and a curse, <laughs> or at least for us, because wow. um, originally, like generally, get the when Axel I, Rose level going. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, a bit of that, man. That's the thing. Like it was <laughs> and in the same way that like you're like, <laughs> holy shit, are, are, are we um, some kind of monstering it? There's times where I'm like, are we Chinese democracying this thing? <laughs> like, <laughs> so um, yeah, it's uh it was the it, like we just we started writing and we just spent a long time writing it and letting the the ideas coalesce um and the idea was obviously to do what we love doing but obviously push it out further than anything we've done before and as far as we were concerned like it's simply due to the time factor there wasn't an excuse not to experiment and not to push ourselves to do things which we hadn't been able to do previously because a lot of the time you can't do it because you don't have the time to either learn how to do it or you have like you're too familiar with your own stuff like the muscle memory of the way you used to play something night after night after night is still so ingrained and once that's bled out of you to a degree that like the 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 memory slots empty out a bit so something new can come in so we're like all right this one's going to be a bit more out there um but towards the end of the cycle the process it got it got a little bit uh it got difficult because we'd had so much time that a song that you loved that you wrote six months ago, you've now heard a thousand times over while you're just sitting in the studio and you're like, I'm kind of bored of it. Maybe I should start changing the riffs. And like, we started going down these rabbit holes of changing things because we were bored of them and we were seeking something better or something perfect. And you, you lose track of the idea that like better and perfection are just a perspective. And that perspective is very much influenced by your familiarity with what you're doing. So like all of a sudden we start rewriting and churning through songs, like rewriting a song 60 times over that was good in the first place, just because you're like, it could be better. It could be better. And you're like, we, we went down these wormholes, which kind of drove certain members of the band to insanity, myself included. <laughs> um, and then that fell over into the, the recording process as well, which added a lot to it. Like it, 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 it was one of those, it was a very big learning curve for us in what to do and what not to do. And like, it was kind of the opposite thing where in the, in the past we're like, we need more time to create a record. This time I was like, we had too much time to create a record. We went to the other end end of it. And luckily like the album that once we're finished, there was, there's nothing about it, which like no stone was unturned. Everything was fully realized. And we sat down and we're like, congratulations. This is exactly what we wanted, which is, such an amazing feeling but um but it was like we literally took a sledgehammer to each other to to smash this thing out (laughs) and it might not necessarily have been like it it didn't necessarily have to be that way but uh, like uh, yeah that's the thing and 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 to be fair as well COVID added a hell of a lot to it like when you're locked in us like we record in Jeff our lead guitarist studio which is in his house in his in his basement and um that means he can't yeah. escape you know, like the old show. days you walk in it's like hi mom thanks for the sandwich go downstairs yeah <laughs> going downstairs yeah but but in his case it was like you walk in and um it's like everyone's locked down people are sick he's got two infant kids oh, and man. he's caring for his mother-in-law as well and we're obsessed with this album and he's obsessed with this album as well and he's chasing this perfect dream of the perfect riff and um it, it was just like complete pressure cooker with everything like it 
every like all forces pulling in all different directions like when we came to actually record it we couldn't even leave the country so we flew our producers from arizona and ottawa over here it cost like forty thousand dollars for two airfares just to get them into the country so and they had to live here for four months to get this thing done we had to like get a studio in our town that was kind of up to scratch which was which luckily worked out well and get all the gear in to, to even make the thing so the, there was nothing about this that was that was easy to do <laughs> so, so it all just piled on top that's the thing pressure after pressure of like don't fuck this thing up <laughs> don't fuck it up there's no excuse <laughs> i'm curious what what was australia like during that time because you know in the states you had one city it's COVID's the worst thing ever and it's literally killing yeah. everybody. And then the next city, it's like, what do you mean? I'm at the bar drinking a PBR. Um, uh, it was, it was kind of like that. Such here. a weird. It was just, it was weird. Like it was, first of all, it was amazing to start with. Like we, the sense of danger, um, uh, like our, our governments shut the borders, like it, as soon as it started. Right. So like our case count with everything was like, there's an extra 600 cases in the country. Like everyone be, be, be like be on guard today. But the reality of it was, it wasn't really in the community. It was, it was crazy low while they kept the borders shut, which was the first full year and a half. Mm -hmm. And essentially like it was, it was kind of cruisy, but we also live in a small town. Like my brother lives in Melbourne and they went through some crazy lockdowns and shit. Like they were, they'd lock the whole city down and all of that kind of stuff. So it varied from place to place. Um, and our like federal government just like put their hands up because they're like, we don't want to be responsible for this. So the state government did whatever they did. So it all varied from place to place really. But like personally for us, it was actually, it was fine for the first year and a half. And then when it finally got here, it went fucking nuts because we had no exposure to it and it just went boom. Like we're a tourist town. Oh, it just spread. Like yeah. Once it got in, it just went bah, through everywhere and everyone got sick. Um, but the, the start of it was actually, it was literally just resigning yourself to the fact that this thing was, was just going to be here. And yeah, <laughs> it's like, it was more the fact of like, well, you thought nothing was ever going to stop your band from touring. Like it was, it was so weird because coming off the high of like where the trajectory of the band was heading and everything we'd done, like the, 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 the run of shows we'd done before COVID hit was like the European festival season, which culminated in us headlining Vakken to like 80,000 people. And then we come home and we do three headlining festival shows in Australia. And we're like the first Australian band to headline an Australian festival just annihilated the entire thing. And we're like, this is nuts. Nothing can stop us. Nothing can stop what's going on because like recession, been through that. Volcanoes, been through that. Floods, fire, whatever, we can get through this. And I'd literally just, I'd told so many friends, like nothing can slow us down. It's like pandemic, bitch. Didn't think of that one, did you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the universe uh, really goes, oh, what'd you say? Here, hold my beer. Yeah, oh, it was so, it was crazy. It was, it was exactly that. Like I remember when it first started and I, we had a European tour like book that was the first one that got cancelled and i was watching the news and it's like there's this virus in italy and i was like oh that's weird and then the next day i listened again and it's like this thing spread it's making people really sick and i i actually called luke um our manager and i was like you seeing this thing like we've got a gig in milan and there's people talking about this thing going around which is pretty nuts and we're like we'll keep an eye on it for a week and we can cancel in three weeks if we have to. And within five days, like all of Europe was done. And we're like, yeah. whoa, all right, that's it. But I can very specifically remember the point when it jumped onto our radar of like, this might be a, this might be a thing. <laughs> it took a week for like two years of planning to just to go, bang, you're done. Yep. <laughs> Put a book in your head. <laughs> well, did I, yeah, I remember it well, because we were... You know, you started hearing about it. Oh, it's in China. Oh, it's a little bit yeah. up now. And we were, uh, and I'm sure you've heard this from other people, but we were all at this festival for the radio, for the rock radio world in Las Vegas at the end of February, 2020. You know, we're all there, like Bush is headlining a, a showcase yeah. show and, and all of that. And it's, it's, uh, 
it, it's incredible. We're all having a great time. It, yeah, it was a week and a half later. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell? How did we yeah. not all rock out of there just dying at that point then? Yeah, you know? dude. Yeah. That's a it's weird like the fucking thing. Avengers snap. It was like, you want to change the world? Bang. There yeah, it goes. exactly. <laughs> oh, man. Well, anyway, so so darker still. Um, really, really quickly, I wanted to ask you about this because we've talked about thematically in lyrics before and how you kind of get there. Um, yeah. I saw you say something in another interview about playing the role of the villain yeah on this particular album and i'm yeah. curious like I, I, you're a nice guy but you keep going the route of the bad guy yeah all well, bad guys interesting isn't they? <laughs> <laughs> everyone loves the villain no like it's it's well it's it's i'm a nice guy that is the issue that literally is the is the issue that i that i've faced and it's the issue that i've that that basically had been my undoing to a degree of mm. trying to be the nice guy for everyone to the point where like you base your self-worth around other people's perceptions of you and the i just I've, i just hit a point in my life where no matter what i did to please other people because i am a, a people pleaser the opinions and that people held about me or perceptions of me would just go that guy's a dickhead like that guy is the bad guy. He's the source of the problems in my life. And, and, and this, this ranged from like, like pressures put on me by the band or people who see me in the band or like really close to home friends that I've known for a long time and watching their perception of who I am change um, out of whatever is going on in their life and not being able to rectify it because like, fuck it's, I don't, I don't know what it's like being friends with me at, uh, let alone being friends with someone who has had this very strange trajectory of success. It must be quite triggering, but um, that's like kind of where it came from. Um, and this was me choosing to basically acknowledge the fact that I, I'm happy being who I am. And if that means that I'm the villain to you, and if that means I'm a dickhead or a wanker or fucking the source of all your misery, then man sucks to be you because fuck i'm happy being where i am and i'm not going to make any apologies for anything i've done to get here like everything has been with the best of intention and i've only ever shown love <laughs> but if you don't want that that's fine <laughs> i'm happy doing me and smashing through this world <laughs> and yeah and you shouldn't feel bad for that i don't think anybody should as long as you're being real to yourself and real to who yeah. you're, to your being is um that's it. Yeah, I'm glad to hear everything's going good, man. I'm glad to hear the tour was good. Uh, as far as the United States goes, there's a couple festivals booked, if I'm looking at this correctly. Yeah, I think we're, we're doing like Ship Rocked and then we're doing, uh, what are we doing? God, yeah, we're doing, uh, there was a bunch of announcements this week. So something there's a couple in Florida, festivals. Florida, Harder, Heart, yeah. heart something. Um, yeah, Heart yeah. Support. I think, yeah. I wrote it down. Heart Support Fest. Yeah, there you yeah, go. Yeah, in Orlando. So we're doing that. And then we'll, there'll be some more shows announced and stuff as well. So it, it's going to be like a, 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 a smaller run than usual just because of the restraints of winter basically <laughs> like trying to navigate through fucking um, american winter with a bus is a is a challenge but this is just like it's the start basically ah, it's the start of the suck it up and yeah that's it we're like we're, <laughs> we really our, our goal really is to basically to expose people as much to what this band can and currently like B and currently is the rest of the world over, which is the shows that you see in Europe with the full production, because it is a very large experience when, when that is given basically. And well, that's what I, we, I want that. Yeah. See, we, we had had a conversation. This is just it, man. Like right before all that yeah. stuff, right? No, oh, nothing's going to stop us now, you know? Yeah. Um, and I had, you and I had had a private conversation. It wasn't an interview, just backstage mm -hmm. in a show in Chicago. And you had said, you know, that you were going to, you, that's, that was the next thing you were going to do here. Oh, and it was all, that was what the tour was. They got yeah. canceled. It was Full so, production. Just the arenas like, you booked at. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It's a like the tickets and stuff were great for it. Like everything was good. It just got scrapped. And then this time around, we're like, basically this is us like breaking the ice again. So we can get back to that, back to that, like back to that drive and back on that pathway because um, I mean, it's, I, I know the difference of the Parkway show that everyone loves 
in the States and the Parkway show that we've like built ourselves on. But I know the difference of, of experience and impact to where we've been able to push it. And there's been years of, um, of growth uh, in the visual realm. Um, and it's, it's not something that's just like, oh, and then we add a couple of bells and whistles. It's a, it's a completely different experience. The arena show from the club show is a massively heightened experience and you can't force that like i'm not I've, you can book an arena but if 20 people come out then it's 20 people getting an arena show and you're broke <laughs> but at the same time like we we don't want to we we want to give people the opportunity to see that because i know there is a lot to be taken from it like it is it's an experience that's worth your time and your effort and your money like it's worth the ticket price to see what parkway does in an arena i will put our show against any band on the planet <laughs> fingers crossed man we get yeah dude yeah otherwise Please come otherwise i'm gig. flying to europe <laughs> better yet i'm flying to australia um, yeah anyway uh, winston thank you for doing this man we just had a very long conversation but i appreciate oh, my it. pleasure it's so to see you it's so good to catch up yeah man likewise and i guess it'll be yeah it'll be a while since I see you in person but catch up again that's yeah. it <laughs> well we'll do it in person next time too yeah. I'm sure it'll, it'll, it'll come around yeah it will we're, we're getting there that's the thing this is just the start like it might be I'm, I'm not gonna say it's a full step back it might be a half step back but that's the thing it's a half step back because we're taking a run up for the next leap nothing wrong with a reset and being ready that's it man that's it all right winston mccall parkway drive thank you my brother Cheers, Andrew. Have a good one, man. Cutter's Rockcast. Don't forget to tune in. Exactly.